In XSI, we have many tools that we can use to duplicate objects different ways and create clones of objects in our scene. Let me show you some examples of the differences between these different methods of duplication in XSI. Here we have a simple cube object, which is just called cube in my scene. I'll use it to experiment here with and show you how these different tools work. Let's take this object and let's make one simple duplicate, and that's it. It's pretty simple to do. Simply select the object you want to duplicate, Hold down Control, Alt, and hit D on the keyboard, and that will create a duplicate object. Now, if we move the duplicate object out of the way, we can see we do have, in fact, two objects, which, in, which further can be verified by hitting 8 on the keyboard to open up the Explorer view. And you can see here's our original cube object, and here's cube 1, the duplicate. So let's close that. Let's select the cube object, the duplicate object, and delete it. There's other ways we can duplicate objects as well. Let's select a cube. And this time, hit Control and D to duplicate using transforms. Now let's move the object forward a little bit and hit Control and D again. Move it forward, hit Control D again, and you can see every time we hit Control D from here on out, it's going to go ahead and create duplicate objects that are going to increment by the same distance that we moved the original object forward. This is called duplication with transforms. XSI remembers the last transforms or the last movement, rotation, or scaling of the previous object and applies it to the next object that you duplicate. That's done by holding down control and using the D key on the keyboard. So let's delete all of these objects. Now let's go back and see what's another way that we can duplicate objects. Select the original cube and this time hold down control shift and hit D on the keyboard. This will bring up the duplicate multiple options window. You can use this options window to go ahead and set up many different parameters and options that will control the way that objects are duplicated from here on out. For example, we can change the number of copies of an object to say five copies. We can go to the transform tab and we can set up different transform parameters for scaling, rotation, and translation. So I can say that the five copies that are going to be made are going to move at increments of five units in the z-axis and maybe we can rotate it in the y-axis as well say 15 degrees we'll hit OK and now you can see that these different duplicated objects rotate at increments of 15 degrees and their center uh, pivot point is moved their center of mass is moved 5 units in the z-axis which gives us this uh, pretty interesting and a bit look uh, random looking duplicated uh, series of cubes over here. So that's how you duplicate with the options window. That's control shift and D. Let's take these objects here and let's delete them. Now let's see how we can clone objects. Let's take the original cube object here and let's go up to the edit menu, go to duplicate slash instantiate, and we'll go to clone single, or let's go to clone multiple so you can see this a little bit better. In the clone multiple options window, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the duplicate multiple options window. It is essentially the same, only we're going to be dealing with clones instead of duplicates. So what's the difference between the two? Well, instead of explaining, I'll just show you, and that'll be a quick and easy way for you to see uh, visually what the difference is. Let's make five copies again. This time we won't rotate, so we'll put a Y rotation to zero, but we'll leave the translation to Z axis to five units. Hit OK. Now it appears to have done the same thing as the duplicate multiple options window was doing before, creating multiple um, duplicates and just moving them five units along the z-axis. But there is a difference. If I take any one of these cloned cube objects and say I take this last one here and I hit M on the keyboard to go to tweak mode, tweak component mode, and I go ahead and start moving one of these vertices around, I can see that the only object that's affected is the cube object that I have selected. I'll hit Control Z to undo and hit spacebar to go back to object mode. So what's the difference between a clone and a duplicate? Well, if I go ahead and select the master object that all the clones were duplicated from, and I do the same thing, I can see that any changes that I create to the original cube are propagated to all of the clone objects. So for example, I can take this cube object and start to edit and modify it. 
and the other cloned objects are going to go ahead and mimic those changes or the changes will be propagated from the master object that was cloned to all of the cloned objects as you can see. So those are some of the tools for duplicating objects in XSI and some of the different methods we can duplicate with transforms without transforms as well as making clones in XSI which can be extremely useful um, for any number of different situations and circumstances.